Uh, who was your influences when you were coming up in the rap game? There's definitely the mob, Wu Chang, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, Hove, Nas, uh, MOP, uh, uh, Daz Effects at one point. Ooh, um, yes. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I listen, you know, Rock Cam, of course, you know, uh, Cool G Rap. I can go on, uh, Big Pun, Fat Joe, I can go on, Busta Rhymes. I could go on, you know what I'm saying? Like a DMX. Um Locks. Could go on, you know what I'm saying? Like I definitely looked up to the to, to the hip hop culture. The locks, of course, the locks, uh, you know, that's basically the best rap group to me is like Mob Deep, the Locks, CNN, um, MOP, like I said, uh man, there's a couple, you know what I'm saying? There's a couple, yeah. man. I, I I I actually just enjoyed music and beats and just the sound and the vibe, like all type of music. It ain't just rap period, but rappers I definitely fuck with a lot because, you know, they was able to tell the story that I was actually leading. You know, me and my mom's was murdered when I was a kid. Uh, my pops being a dope head, you know what I'm saying? Um, it was me and my sister, you know what I'm saying? And I was selling drugs because my sister couldn't get me the things that I, I wanted, you know, that my friends had. You know, you wanted those Barclays, you wanted those Chris Webbers, you wanted those Anthony, you know, of them Anthony uh, Hardaway's before they became the phones. You know what I'm saying? Like, you wanted them Pippins. You wanted, you know, I wanted all that shit. And I had to sell drugs to get it because my mom was murdered when I was a kid. And basically, my pops didn't give a fuck about that. That nigga was just getting high. My pops still stripped up to today. Hell, my fucker. Hell, my fucker. He just, you know, some people can't ever change their life. Just, he got it. He got your, a hold your, father, your father is he, he struggling with the, with, the, with the coke right now. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, he, he, yeah, he's still like, you know, he can't iron shit like that. You know what I'm saying? We chop it up often, but I still pull up and break bread. We'll take him a couple dollars, shit like that. Does he, does he know that, that you yeah, know yeah, he was on one of my... Yeah, he, he actually does. Like, I told him, he didn't know how real it was until, like, you know, he started, like, I showed him on YouTube, and, and then um the motherfucker, like, I put out a project, and I had my pops, like, my nephew had seen my dad, so, like, in Rockaway, and, he was like, yo, you know, your son is turning it up, right? He like, he like, yeah, no, I've been hearing about him, you know what I'm saying? So he like, yo, like, leave him a message. So he, he left me a message, and I took that message and put it on one of my projects. I believe it was later as now. What It was one of these motherfucking projects. You know, I got so many. I'm on 19 right now, bro. Yeah, trust me. I'm trying to keep up with you. I'm trying to, you the guy that, you, you the guy that be making me want to tap out. You be the one. Cause they'd be like, have you heard this? Have you heard this? Have you heard this? I said, listen, I'm still five Flea Lord albums back right now. So I had to jump on at least a, I know Loyalty of Death 2. When that came out, I listened to that joint immediately. You know what I mean? I made sure I jumped on that. And of, of course, Lord Talk. And these is incredible albums that I don't really think you get enough credit for right now. You did a video with Uncle Nick. You said, bro, I made $200,000 last year, bro, off the fucking hustle. Man. You said that on video, right? I, I, I didn't lie. Well, I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I, want, I want people to be inspired when they hear something like that. Like, yo, that's a nice ass fucking number, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah you, man, you, like, you we got this shit out the mud, man. Yeah, we got this shit out the mud. Like, that's that's why I said, you know, the five things I explained earlier with doing this shit, you know, as an artist, you got to figure that shit out. And you really got to put that next step forward on saying, you know what, this is what I'm going to do. You know what I'm saying? Because if you don't, yeah, you dropped gems on that on that video. You, I want to. What I want to. I really want to get into this conversation that you was having with Uncle Nick. Shout to Uncle Nick. He entertaining as fuck. Um, and, and yeah, he is. Great sense of humor. But y'all was talking about a couple cats on there. One of the cats y'all was talking about Agala. I hope I'm pronouncing uh -huh. his name right. And yeah, it, was, it, was, it was some things that happened. Um, and you were saying something directly to him, right? Um. And then there was another guy that you had a problem with on this video, uh, Gully TV, who I just got hip to recently, uh, not too long ago. That was a um, a heated back and forth, it seemed like. Uh, and then you had a video. Uh, yeah, at that time, I was, and I was just disappointed in the gentleman, bro, because we all men. You know what I'm saying? We all men first. And when you, you know, you're doing this Instagram shit and you're trying to entertain people with beef, like, real right. beef is going to come knocking on your door. Right, right. Real beef going to come knocking on your door. And, and I don't want you to take me out of my funk. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm tapped in, so, like, you know, shout out to Aguilar. 
Shout out to the Real Gully TV. No disrespect. I'm going to tell you right now, the Real Gully TV was, he was disrespecting Prodigy on like his post, whatever, and I, you know, whatever, like how he runs his page is how he runs his page, but people was tagging me and basically expecting me to say something. And not that I even would entertain the gram because that's not what I do, but I seen Gully TV and he had footage of all of us at Prodigy's, um, the second viewing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I went to the family drink, then I went to the second viewing. Um, I was already there, so when he was there, he was shooting the footage and all that, and basically, um, I just hit him on the ground, like, yo, you trying to, like, go at P, you know what I'm saying? He dead now, but you was at his funeral, supposedly paying respects. Mm. And then his response was, uh, suck my dick, you light-skinned, I'll spit in my hand and slap you, I'll never forget it, because I, I, I never seen him yet. But I'll never forget what he said on the ground. So, um, yeah, Gully TV, he definitely got out of line. And, you know, like I said, we men. So, like, I, I don't take heat. I never even told a man to suck my dick. I don't I don't play that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that just, that's just some, some shit you get shot over. And if you if you saying it loosely, that means you ain't get shot yet. So you said it to the right motherfucker. But I'm not going to throw my life away and kill you. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I, you know, the time will come where we, we're going to cross paths. But it's still peace and blessings. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because it, I'm not going to lose who I am. But he definitely got slick with his mouth. You know what I'm saying? Or oh, just talking slick about P. And then, you know, like I said some shit. And it wasn't like I ain't saying a disrespectful form. His form. And then I noticed that he says something like dick to a lot of people on his page. Like, I see it, you know what I'm saying? Like, I started, like, stalking his page yeah. because I got to drop one of them and found out his address. So I have his address, you know what I'm saying? But if I pull up, it won't be a pretty sight. So, you know, I, I, I spoke to him on the, you know, on the gram, and, and that was that. I did a diss track. The diss track, you know, is basically, you know, I heard he was fucking with a transvestite out here. and, and, and Well, not out here because I'm in Cali, but in New York. And that's why he went back to PA. Like, I heard so much shit. Like, people was talking about him. I just got homework, and I did a diss track, in which I didn't even release because I said a couple things about and no disrespect to the gays. You know what I'm saying? I never disrespect the guy. I don't disrespect nobody. Right. So, you know what I'm saying? If you right. gay, you gay. You know what I'm saying? I, and I, 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 I said, I said, um, basically, I, I, I said some shit, like, off the some shit. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I, I shouldn't have said I probably would have released the song. But I wasn't going to go back and still release it. It was no purpose for me to feed into that. Yeah, me and Aguilar, we spoke, you know what I'm saying? I gave the nigga my number. He'll call my phone, bro. Because um, he was talking crazy, you know, to Wes. And truthfully, like, the bros don't really, like, be on no beef shit. You know what I'm saying? They just, they working just like how I'm working. Yeah. And um, I'm one of those people where, you know, I'm loyal to my, 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 my peoples. So uh, if somebody says something about you and it's really, like, those type of words, you know what I'm saying? And saying thirds like family shit and all that. Aguilar I got really loose. Um, and he had an album release party. I found out where he was at. I went to his album release party. I two pieced him. You know what I'm saying? Like this this is true shit. You know what I'm saying? I two pieced him, looked him in his eyes and was like, yo, don't ever mention my niece or my nephew. Don't ever mention West Side's kids. Don't ever I don't give a fuck what you say. He a man. Don't mention the kids, nigga. I'm on your fucking hills. And then that was that. You know what I'm saying? And we, we left it at that. And then, uh, like I said, I, we spoke and I gave him my number. Holla at me, nigga. What's up? You want to meet up? You know what I'm saying? If you want to you be a man about it. like, And we spoke like men and he said he knew what he did. And we took it like that because I told him it could have been ugly. I could have came over there different. You know what I'm saying? Like, I went over there as a man and shot five with the nigga and we didn't even get to shoot five. I didn't knock him out. I just, you know what I'm saying? I, 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 I hit him two times. Boop, boop. And I gave him the opportunity to fight back and to know what it was about. It was about you disrespecting kids. Don't never mention nobody's kids. You know what I'm saying? Like it could have been totally different. Are you but trying it to was, tell it me was, that? It was. I move on. Mil, I move on militant time. I'm not a tough person. I'm a little guy, but I move on militant time, and I don't disrespect nobody. So, you know, I, you know what I'm saying? Like shit. And I got big homies with me. Like I got motherfuckers that six five, six eight, smack dog shit out of you. You two piece Ag Agala. And he uh -huh. didn't swing back. Is that what that's what you're telling me? Oh nah, he didn't swing back. That shit hurt. That shit hurt. That shit rung a bell. 
You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I ain't gonna hold you, but like I said, man, I spoke to him over the phone and we, you know, we spoke as men and we talked it out and I just told him, like, you know what I'm saying? I think he was going about it the wrong way and, you know, disrespecting people and, you know, mentioning kids and shit like that. As men, you know, you just don't do that, man. Like, you know, motherfuckers be dying over shit like that. So, you know, we spoke about it and we had a good conversation and we, we made amends. Like, that was that. So, you know what I'm saying? We ain't had no problem, but... However, if, you know, the bros see him and they wanted to address her, whatever the case may be, that's, you know, that's that's here or there. That's not, you know, I got nothing to do with that. I don't know if they ever, if they was to run to see him, like, what happened, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't the one he was talking to. He was talking to them. I just went over there and made sure that he don't say anything anymore. But, you know, how people take it, you know, shit. When you see somebody motherfucker says some shit to you, it don't matter if your bro seen him or not. You ain't see him, so I right. don't know how that. Right, I don't know, right. but hopefully, you know, hopefully it's all peaceful time. Let's go. Now I know I, I saw something. I believe uh, recently, I think Aguilar was on Twitter, right? And he said he wished Griselda now nothing but peace, blessings, and success. And um, uh, and look, you did the stand up thing as as a grown ass man. You know what I mean? Uh, that's, yo, that's what, it should always have been that from the start. It should have never been anything different. You know what I'm saying? But whatever, you know, sometimes people. You know, I, I don't know what was what, what happened to trigger that, but you know, sometimes you need someone to come and give you a wake up call. I was the blessing on a wake up call where it was just a man thing where we went hand in hand and it went to there and it didn't go different because somebody else probably would have addressed it differently. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we still could go on Twitter and Instagram and live our life. Is there any way possible that maybe one day, I mean, that y'all might end up on a track together? You and this you and Aguilar. We spoke about it because Ag wanted that, you know what I'm saying? But um, I, I'm i not really interested in working with nobody anymore. Like, you know what I'm saying? But besides, like, as far as, like, Legends and Lord Mob right now, you know what I'm saying? And, and then select a few brothers that I would work with that's not Lord Mob, but I'm just focused on Lord Mob right now. So, you know what I'm saying? If you ain't Lord Mob or, like, my, my inner core brothers, then I probably won't be working with anyone moving forward right now. Now, oh, but, um. I, you know, peace and blessings to his music, you know what I'm saying? Like, shit, man, he's been doing music for a long time, so he's known, you know what I'm saying? But as far as the thing with, with Gully is concerned, y'all have not made peace, is that correct? Oh, um, truthfully, like, you know what I'm saying? I know he heard the diss track, and, you know what I'm saying, he hasn't really spoken upon me no more, and I'm glad because it's like, this is different. You know, I'm not one of the niggas you're going to talk about, and plus, I don't disrespect anybody, so you just got me fucked up where, you know, you was disrespecting Prodigy. And you know what I'm saying? I said what I said and I didn't say anything still disrespectful and his response was way out of line that can really, you know, I really wanted to go there at, at that moment. And now it's like, shit, man, um, you can't say nothing to me that's really going to throw me off right now. Like, I'm 500,000 reasons up. <laughs> Did y'all hear you know that? Y'all I mean? hear that? <laughs> I'm not... I'm not even going to say it again, but yeah, bro, like, I'm blessed, man. Like, God has put me in a position where nothing can fuck me over right now. Nothing. But you know that's, what I'm that's, and, that's, that's and the hustle. It's the, it's the talent. This is where I get Lord Mom. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, break bread with, I break bread with genuine people. It's, it's, it's the talent and it's the hustle, you know? I, I tell you, you got you can have one without the other. This shit's not gonna work. I tell people this all the time. So yeah, man, like niggas, look, I I, I was in a change jar. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't want to go get a chain because I feel like that's be too much rubbing in the niggas' faces. But I got I got one of these. Mm. This one's twenty five thousand. I don't see Gully with one of these. No disrespect to him, but when you want to talk big money shit and you want to get disrespectful and talk about you're going to slap me and all that. Like, that was just way out of line. But this is oh, this old shit. This is old news. We bringing it back up. You know, me and you kicking it. You want to know about it. But, um, yeah, like, you ain't got one of these, and I got houses. Multiple. I'm taking trips back and forth, having fun, living life, and touching base with legends that respect me. So he really didn't know who he was getting out of line with, and it's fine. You know what I'm saying? No disrespect, man. You know, we, and we and grow, not, man, to word, not even to put words in your mouth. Like, I could think you fly as fuck, right? Somebody else might think you you whack or they think they might be able to put hands on you or some other. The most important thing, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I would imagine your kids looking up to you. 
being proud of what what daddy's putting out into the atmosphere. Yeah, man, I just I just paid my daughter's college tuition off. You know, she got a scholarship for eighty thousand a year. That's you what's know what up. So you know, my daughter got you know almost fourteen hundred on her SATs. Mm. Um, so I you know uh, I covered the fifteen thousand clean. You know what I'm saying. Uh, and that's you know that's just from hard work and dedication and and I can cover off the forty five thousand right now if I wanted to pay the rest of the school years off for the next three years, but I don't know if she wants to stay in this school, so I would just pay it yearly off. You know what I'm saying? But as a father, I don't condone anyone telling another man to suck their dick because I'm a father. You know what I'm saying? I'm a father, like I'm a man first. Fuck this rap shit and fuck this entertainment stuff. Mm. So he got way out of line. Are we good? Yeah, you good. Yeah, you know, he got way out of line, you know what I'm saying? And it's, you know, we passed that already because, you know, he ain't mentioning me no more. But if he was to ever mention me again, like, I would just say, listen, man, um, you know, we can meet up in person. No guns. You know, he'd be in the gym. I see him work out. That's good. I don't work out. But I'm, 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 I'm confident, very. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, man, I respect Gully's hustle, man. You know, if he was disrespecting me for, like, entertainment, just know that I'm not the one to do that with. That's all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, did, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, I seen him out there doing this thing for Prodigy. When I saw him, he had the white, you know, the all-Muslim, like, white joint on. And listen, peace and blessings, bro. But you just got out of line, you know, disrespecting the legend and whatever the case may be. Like I said, you know, if that's what you do, you do. But they kept bringing me involved with it, like, you know what I'm saying? So I just said what I said, and like I said, it wasn't disrespectful, but he did it for entertainment, and then, you know, I got a diss track on Tuck that I never released, you know, I just let people hear it. Some people, like, when they heard on my live, they put it up on YouTube, he heard it, you know what I'm saying? He was like half a mil, uh, you know, good beat. I would never tell the body, you know, tell no pe the people that that's fire. Like, man, listen, it's cool, bro. You know, peace and blessings to, you know, those two guys. I don't got no problem with anyone. Um, I don't want no problems. I'm constantly working. Like you said, you mentioned everything I'm doing and um and adding adding being a father, you know what I'm saying? Like I ain't a dad, I'm a father. Yes. It's a big difference, you know what I'm saying? My dad is a dad. And let me ask you this. <laughs> the daughter, what does she want to be? What she what she think what she study? Uh, uh my daughter my daughter, she's taking up psychology, but um, you know, she's uh her, her art is amazing, you know what I'm saying? She paints. Uh, she draws, uh, she takes amazing photos. Um, yeah, she's very talented, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, like I tell some of the art, we could just put on shirts and I can sell it whenever for her. Like that's always, uh, you know, money waiting for her in the bank right there. But, you know, like I said, I'm 500, I, I'm going to say it again, I'm 500,000 reasons why I don't need any problems with anyone. And my daughter doesn't have to do anything but just get her education now. And focus on herself before I, it was the same thing but i was out there you know doing negative for a positive outcome i sold drugs to pay my bills i sold drugs to feed my family i sold drugs to keep everybody fly because school right now was more of a fashion show than anything so if you're not looking up the par and you fall into that sometimes you would not want to get an education so you got to look clean and sharp yeah. you know what i'm saying because when we look dirty and all that it, it it just fucks us up a little bit. But those be the smartest motherfuckers that don't care about the fashion and the looks. They become very successful and get everything they want. But people sometimes, they get caught up with everything. So me being that I'm in the hood and I live in this, that background that you got right there. Yeah. Uh, you know, I come from that. You know, like, it was, a, you got to keep up the par. So, you know, I spent a lot of, of my money on, you know, keeping everybody fresh. And food on the table, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that drug shit that I was doing wasn't because I wanted to keep myself looking dip and buying designer shit. You know what I'm saying? I never got into swiping no credit cards and doing no shit like that. Like, all my shit is hustle. You know what I'm saying? And my, and my custodies, I never sold crack or dope. I sold coke and weed, party drugs. You know what I'm saying? Always. Never no crack or dope because I never wanted to destroy people because I saw what it did to my family. I saw what my mom's went with this shit. Like, my mom sold drugs and she got murdered from it. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, my pops, you know, he's a heroin addict, so I never sold hard drugs. I fucked with party drugs, and I made a lot of money on party drugs and not destroying anyone, you know, from basically doing, being in the street selling dope and crack. Those drugs destroy people. Yeah, can can you can you talk about? I don't know if you can or not, but can you go into the circumstances that led up to uh, your mother's premature death? Oh uh, man, like you know, basically my mom, uh, 
you know, separating from my dad and just um, being a single mom, you know, she's holding it down. And basically, like, uh, you know, when you can't find work, and this was, like, in the 90s and shit. My mom was murdered in 93. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the late 80s and the early 90s was very hard if you wasn't already, like, brought into money. Yeah. You know, coming from, po like, you know, come, you know, coming up through poverty and, you know, living that life, like, that's what we knew. So my mom's got, um, she got in, into, like, selling drugs and shit like that. And um, it was just, you know, like, she was, she was doing good. Obviously, like, my mom's was holding it down for a couple of years. And uh, it was just this one white dude, I guess, that came. And uh, he was a psycho motherfucker. He killed, like, five other women, including my mom at the time. You know what I'm saying? So he killed, like, six women. And uh, basically, you know what I'm saying? Like, the nigga violated my mom's and killed her. You know what I'm saying? Um, I was 11 years old. I was home, like, six days by myself, like, thinking my mom's was, like, you know what I'm saying? I thought she was in jail because it was a time when my mom's was, you know, selling drugs somewhere in um, Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. I was a little nigga, and uh, she left me in, like, this arcade spot. So I'm playing the games and shit. I was playing like the Ninja Turtles arcade game. Never forget it. Like it's just certain things you never forget as a yeah. kid. You know what I'm saying? And um, I, I started to realize my change was getting low. And my mom's had gave me wild bread to get change. So now I'm like, my change getting low. Like what the fuck is mama love at? Like I go outside and look at shit. See my mom's. I go back inside. And I ain't even got no coins, man. I'm just looking at the motherfucking arcade game. Like niggas done violated me. Like, that, that was up on my mind as a kid, thinking about quarters and shit. Right. But not really thinking of the fact that I'm here and my mom's is selling drugs and she got arrested. So the police brought my mom's in a van. And they came and got me and took her to the precinct. They didn't get her with a cell, obviously, because um my mom's got right back out. But they had her with, like, just possession or something. And they didn't call ACS or nothing. They put me in a precinct with her and let her go through the system and all that. They didn't take her to the tools or nothing and let my moms go from the precinct. Crazy shit I never forget. And my moms is like, I think I'm done. You know what I'm saying? At that moment. And I really thought she was until like she got murdered and I knew it was still, you know, part of that. Like I kind of remember my moms leaving that night, like, you know what I'm saying? And me walking her to where she was about to leave and you know, we lived on the 11th floor in 7115 in Rockaway. Um, and I'm like, why is my mom walking towards the stairs? So I walked to the stairs and I see a white, a white dude, like tall motherfucker. And uh, he's just standing at the bottom of the stairs. And that was a motherfucker that killed my mom's, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? I can't put a face on him now, but like, you know, as a little kid, I remember this face. And I was like, man, I'll kill this motherfucker because I was already into stealing guns from my stepfather and, you know, stealing guns from my father's crib. Like, it was guns everywhere when I was a kid. You know what I'm saying? So I always had them, but my, my goal was to find this motherfucker and kill him. Well, it never happened, you know what I'm saying? Now here I am today, a better man, a better father. And, you know, I just know my mom's is watching over me, and I'm glad, you know, you know, things the way it is now. You know what I'm saying? Like, motherfuckers got, you know, God, God got, you know, God got to deal with you when, when, when that time comes. You know what I'm saying? So if I can't let you, you know, if I can't send you to your maker and, Send you some, you know, send some company to my loved ones, whoever's that's no longer here. If I couldn't do the job and, you know, because, you know, she, you know how I go. You kill somebody, boom, they gone. But then now you're going to jail. So it's two people off. And yeah. that's what they expect from us anyway, to live like yeah. animals. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, sometimes you just got to let God deal with it, man. That's it. Well, that's um, obviously, you know, that's a heartbreaking story to to hear about you know, I mean you obviously have my condolences i know what happened in 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 90 in the 90s but um something like that obviously never goes away so i do appreciate yeah. you being candid about that and, and spe speaking with me in the audience about that that tough situation yeah man you know like I, I don't i don't mind letting niggas know who i am because you know when they hear this you know flea solid motherfucker and, you know like you said shooter flea and you know just things like that motherfuckers do hear shit like that and they like man that nigga ain't about that shit Somebody you saying then then you got motherfuckers that hit my raps and be like, oh he he probably really is like that. But yeah, I am like that. I'm all the way like that. But I'm just a father now, so like I have to be here for my children. And um basically I'm holding down my brothers now and getting everybody in position. So I can't let nothing throw me off. Now if that was stupid flea like Sonny, that's what they call me in the street. They call me Sonny. Mm -hmm. If this was Sonny before I had Madison, my oldest daughter, man, yo ass be in trouble. Mm. Now, see, and the, what I want, I want to make a point of this because <clears throat> not only is you, you, you doing business all over the place, you're making bread, you, you're sending your, your seeds to college, 
so that they can build that generational wealth down the line. It's important, but something that people are probably going to overlook. This man got a daughter that's in college. He on your screen right now looking like he's 24 years old. Like, this dude look young. <laughs> like, you don't look like a dude that have a college-age daughter. You still yeah, – I think that's a benefit to you in this game. Like, I can, you, you said you're 37. I wouldn't have known that. I wouldn't have known that. Looking, not yeah. looking at you. Yeah, man. Uh, oh, Flea, oh, Flea is OG out here, man. You know what I'm saying? But um, I carry myself as a, as a uh, I would say, a grown-ass kid. Yeah. I'm a grown ass kid, you know what I'm saying? Like, I still love to have fun. If I could play video games, which I never do, but if I do, I probably bust pop, I probably bust your ass in some 2K or something, you know what I'm saying? Here, there, little Madden. So I still used to, you know, I used to get busy as a kid, but you know, when you take that step in having kids, then shit ain't about you no more. It's about them. So, like, my whole, you know, I had my daughter when I was 20, but I was already a stepfather at like 17, you know what I'm saying? With the woman that I was raising her kids, I had two daughters with her. And, uh, and I have a son on the way with a, you know, with my new woman right now. But um, yeah, I, I've raised you know two boys that wasn't mine. I've, I've raised my niece and nephew when my sister and I went through my mom's, you know, being murdered. Um, man, so like, it's nothing for me to be a provider now. You know what I'm saying? And teach them how to be providers, and you know, pass it down. For, you know, they teach their friends how to be better. You know what I'm saying? Like, but you know, they, them niggas, you, if you you take it there with them, like they more worse than me, kind of. They don't got like only one of them got kids, the other two don't. So, mm -hmm. like the way I used to be, they probably would go there, but they would talk to me first, and I'll try to like rectify any situation before you know anything is you know because one of them already sat down for five years, and that broke my heart. Mm -hmm. Even though he wasn't my son, you know he sat down for a very long time, and it changed him in a sense where I know that that shit kind of fucked him up a bit. But it also made him sharper and realize that shit, you you are who you are in this world and there ain't nobody else that can do nothing for you in certain positions. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got super deep on this one right here. My fuckers don't know where Flea Lord come from, Mike. Yeah, listen, you know man. I'm going to be honest with you because I, I've been in your lives before. You one of these dudes. A lot of times, I stop. I stop be jumping in your lives so much because I'm like, this dude really gonna think I'm a stalker. But I jump. Nah, in no way. Yeah, I jump in your live, and you it's always you wilding out, like in terms of just studio shit. Um, you playing yeah. the music, you smoking, you excited to engage with the fans. Um, and so, in advance of this interview, I thought, because you're so real on your live, I'm like, I wonder will he be that real in the interview? So, I mean, y'all see what it is right here. It's a, it's the same flea. The same exactly as you always see. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to be any different, bro. Like you know, what I'm saying, like, shit, man, a motherfucker act different. Then that's that's part of being, you know, fake. You know, what I'm saying, I don't have no fakeness in me. Like, I'm super solid. I stand tall. I'm a man of my word. I never fucked no one over. You know, what I'm saying. We we talked about you out there in um, California. Um, yeah, I'm in Compton right now. You had to flick with you. You were. I'm in Compton, where motherfuckers ain't trying to pull up. I'm out here. You trying to go holler at K dot? You you want to do a? <laughs> <laughs> nah, you know what's crazy is um being that Funk is from Compton, um, uh, TF is from Hoover. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm patched in with the people. You know what I'm saying? That's patched in with the streets, and uh, I got genuine love for these guys. You know what I'm saying? This ain't no just no business shit. Rock Marciano, though, dude is so, um, I can't begin to start describing this dude. He's an artist that defies definition and description. He just, he is hip hop, right? Yeah, and yeah. You went ace shit on ice water. Um, yeah, he was I talking. For, I know for a fact people, I looked at the views on YouTube on this video. I know for a fact people sleeping on ice water. Y'all got to go listen to this song because it's the fucking truth. Um, and y'all working we on something? We just shot a video too. For, for Ice Water? Yeah, we just shot one. I'm about to release that very soon. Oh my God, I can't wait. And y'all got more stuff coming up? You and Rock? Besides. Um, yeah, man. In 2021, uh, basically, I got four projects I'm releasing. You know, it's being that I did a project, I'm doing a project every month this year. Um, I missed January, but I gave them two in August. You know what I'm saying? And now we, um, right now we're in September, uh, well, we're in October, excuse me, sorry. Um, and I'm about to go 10 for 10. I'm dropping Rock America. 
You know what I'm saying? Uh, with Ito at the end of this month, uh, November is me and Havoc. You know, fully produce Havoc, and then you know, twelve the twelfth month, which is uh, supposed to be Harry Fraud. Um, hopefully, you know, that falls into play and then it'll be like, that'll be 12 for 12 this year. So I gave them, you know, 12 projects where it's not just Flea Lord drumming on different beats. This is a mix of, of producers working with us. Um, this is besides them working with us. This is, uh, you know, the, um, you know, the, you know, the other artists that's on there featuring on it. It's like, and we just creating magic, you know what I'm saying? With this shit. You so, skipping over you know, something. You, you, glossed, you glossed over something. You... I thought I heard you say Havoc is producing a whole album for you. Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we bringing the infamous Flea Lord out, man. Like, because I jacked, you know, you know, the mob, you know what I'm saying? And, and God bless the soul prodigy. I just feel like me and Havoc have to work. You know what I'm saying? And me and Havoc got like three fire joints tucked right now, mm -hmm. in which I feel seven songs could get done easy. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, whoever I feel like, you know, Conway most of the time is like my brother. He was supposed to be on Law Talk Trilogy. Um, and I actually put his name on it. And it was released with Conway's name on it. So it was out on digital platforms. I had Conway's name, but his verse didn't make it. Like, he didn't get it to me in time. And I stalled them out. But being that I'm dropping these projects, like, every month and I'm catching on the last day, I stalled it out to the last day. And... You know, I just, you know, I called bro. I said, listen, man, shit, you, you know what it is, man. He like, damn, I couldn't get to the flea. Like, you know, but that's my brother. I love him. I don't give a fuck about this rap shit. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, Conway was supposed to be on Law Talk Trilogy because he was on Law Talk 1 and 2, but it didn't make the day. And voice is on there, though. His voice huh? that, that when oh, he yeah, did the interview. Yeah, the presence of him being on a project, I, you know, I had to put that on there. And I just wanted him to be a part of it still. So, you know, being that his, his verse wasn't on it. I got to took that. I took that pro, uh, uh, that part of the uh, interview with him and Rosenberg and Ebro and Laura Styles. I added that, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, you know, Conway's my dog, man, forever. 